So the topic uh, is quite interesting and it is related to the Mediterranean diet. So what it means, uh, you know very well where is the Mediterranean Sea. It's very hot today in Italy. So uh, every each of us would be uh, uh, on, on, on the seaside or in place different from the office where I'm talking to you now. Anyway, I point exactly on the, on the screen where the story started in the as you see in the South Italy near Naples uh, some years ago. It was in 1935. Uh, at that time, it was the time of World War II. And where was a doctor following the Americans' uh, uh, troopers in Italy? You see uh, the doctor was uh, uh, Ang An Ansel Case. Uh, this doctor observed uh, that time Time that for reasons uh, that at that time do not, do not, didn't know very well that the Italian population uh, uh, lack of cardiovascular disorders uh, and that he realized that probably the, this lack of cardiovascular disorders was related to the quality of food. And this is, was not uh, easy to understand at that time. It was a new concept uh, and it arises the the, this concept of this seven country study. And in that study, you see it started in 1958 uh, towards 1970, and then it involved thousands of peoples. Uh, they observed the link between cardiovascular disease and different type of fat. And they observed also that the lifestyle and particularly the uh, diet uh, of people uh, living in Italy and Greece were probably related uh, to uh, the fact that these populations were protected uh, from cardiovascular disorders. But when we talk about the Mediterranean diet, uh, we are talking about the eating uh, patterns uh, of the Southern Italy or Greece uh, that was uh, around the 1960s. So, uh, uh, I, I will show you some slide later, but something has changed from that time. Anyway, the observation from uh, that time that time are still useful today. Uh, essentially, we, we could say that uh, uh, Mediterranean diet uh, is based uh, on the concept that you see in this pyramid. You will find this pyramid in the internet uh, very, uh, very easily. And in uh, very shortly, we could say that the pyramid uh, see at the base uh, what we need most uh, and uh, every day. So especially uh, you see uh, many portions, at least five portions a day of uh, fresh fruit and vegetables. And going up to the, going up to the pyramid, uh, uh, we will uh, repeat this concept later and try to don't lose too much time on the pyramid. Anyway, at the top of the pyramid, you see that the kind of foods uh, that we should keep apart, uh, especially uh, the sugar, it's in the top. Uh, the simple sugar is the top of the pyramid, but ice cream, cookies, uh, uh, candies, and, and so on should be eaten only occasionally. And uh, also in the upper part of the pyramid, you see foods that should be eaten uh, not frequently. For instance, one portion a week, you see, uh, you see uh, for instance, some meats or three portions a week of, uh, of, uh, of cheese or meats on the, and things like that. But uh, another, uh, uh, issues that is very important as you see on the left side of the of the screen is the fact that we should drink especially water and uh, uh, don't drink uh, 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 sweeters or uh, uh, soda or things like that and in the, at that time the uh, the Mediterranean diet comprehend a small glass of wine for a meal so, Essentially, uh, this is a, a short summary. Uh, uh, what is uh, the diet is, is based, especially in plant-based foods. You see fruits, vegetables, pasta, bread, grains, and potatoes. Uh, fresh food, uh, fresh seasonal and local foods, so fruits and vegetables. The olive oil, 
uh, should be the main source of fat in this diet. There should be only a limited amounts of yogurt and cheese daily, but in, li in uh, uh, limited amounts. Uh, several times a week, so not every day, eggs, um, white meat and fish. Uh, only a few times a week, sweet rich in sugar and saturated fat, and only a few times a month, red meat. So you see here that uh, why, uh, why olive, uh, the o o o uh, olive oil? Uh, the point is that olive oil is, uh, and you see in the red box, uh, the composition and in the right side, the composition of olive oil and the difference between olive oil and the, on the upper part of the slide, you see the butter or palm oil or lard or uh, coconut oil. And you see that the olive oil is as, have a small quantity of saturated fat, a high quantity of monosaturated fat, which is expressed in the uh, in a, in a different color, and in the right side, in a green color, the polyunsaturated fat. So the so the composition uh, is not the same of a, of, a, of a different kind of oil that you, you will find in the market. So. Uh, it's a question also of composition. This is the, uh, probably why the oil, olive oil has so protective effect on cardiovascular system. Uh, I, I can't go through this aspect, but uh, there is a, a chemical uh, composition that uh, uh, is behind this concept. Uh, Mediterranean diet is uh, not so difficult to, to follow because essentially, there is no forbidden foods. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's not based on calorie counting. You don't have to keep track of, uh, of, of all these uh, uh, foods that I suggested in the pyramid. Uh, at the base uh, uh, concept, at the base of the pyramid that is not expressed in that pyramid, but is a we should uh, uh, talk also of a physical activity because it is, it, it, this is an essential part uh, of each kind of diet, including Mediterranean diet. And, uh, uh, and I will show you later why this is uh, so important. Uh, but I think that uh, uh, although it, it seems simple, this diet, uh, the real uh, uh, Transferability in the in 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 our uh, uh, in our uh, in everyday in everyday life is not so easy because uh, it uh, uh, we know very well that the Western diet uh, is not uh, it's a bit different. Uh, you see that uh, uh, the uh, 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 fat uh, are not uh, uh, usually. Uh, the assumption is not related to olive oil, but is mostly in the Western diet, you use mostly solid fats, butter, margarine, cream cheese, uh, coconut, palm, tropical oils. Uh, you see that these kind of fats are not uh, so healthy uh, for you. And so uh, the, consum the consum oil consumed should be uh, switched uh, to olive oil, and it, and when you uh, are willing to uh, to improve uh, the uh, the taste of your uh, uh, the taste of the food, uh, the diet, uh, it would be helpful to use uh, herbs, uh, spices, uh, garlic, onions, uh, and something that help in. Uh, uh, with cooking, obviously, but uh, uh, less use, I su suggest, you know, margarine, cream, cheese, or things like that. Vegetables, yes, vegetables uh, are including, you should always try to incorporate uh, vegetables uh, in uh, every day. Uh, the aim will be uh, more than two servings a day, so both at lunch and dinner, and they should consume it uh, uh, especially in uh, 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 raw, uh, 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 raw uh, food, not not cooked, and uh, try to, uh, uh, to 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 use when possible uh, uh, not too much oil when when you when you eat vegetables. Uh, also, including olive oil, try to reduce the quantity 
things that uh, have to reduce fat if you want to lose weight. And uh, uh, otherwise, you, 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 it's helpful to use, for instance, vinegar or lemon for when, when, when you prepare the salads or uh, the salads or uh, vegetables. Fruits, fruits are quite important, uh, and uh, uh, fruit, fresh fruit especially. And in uh, 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 and uh, at least three servings a day, but also, for instance, the if you consider the apple just as just an apple, you 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 could eat an apple five times a day: breakfast, uh, midday, lunch, mid afternoon, and dinner. So increase the quantity of fresh fruits in your diet, and don't don't add sugar when you prepare the fruits. Uh, whole grain and bread. So this is a uh, an uh, 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 this is an important issue, especially related to uh, diabetes. Uh, so, uh, in a whole grain whole, uh, in bread, you have to avoid, when possible, the white uh, flour. So, uh, uh, I mean, pasta or bread that come from white flour. Should be avoided. So if you if try to switch to the uh, the the whole the whole grain bread and pasta, and try to reduce rice because rice uh, uh, may uh, uh, is uh, uh, increase a little bit more sugar in your blood in comparison to pasta or bread, and. Uh, uh, this is uh, my suggestions about uh, yes, bread, pasta, and so on. Legumes have to be included in the diet. Uh, consider uh, legumes have a, a resource for uh, vegetable proteins, uh, at least three servings a week when possible. So include beans, for instance, uh, chickpeas, peas, and so on. Another food is uh, seafood and fish. Uh, be careful when you prepare uh, or don't, don't use when possible the fried fish, fried seafood. So maintain the cooking uh, uh, without, uh, uh, yes, not fried uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a sea of oil. So try to avoid this uh, uh, kind of cooking. Uh, Meat uh, have to prefer the uh, uh, you should prefer the uh, white meat, especially from chicken and turkey, and try to avoid the red meat uh, uh, for the quantity of fat that is included uh, in the red meat. So uh, this has to this is a, a typical food, the classic regular food of a Western diet. But if you switch to a Mediterranean diet, uh, this should be reduced. So. Uh, things like sausages, hot dogs, hamburgers, hamburgers, and so on should be reduced and uh, at least uh, eaten occasionally uh, one, three times a month and eat mostly white, white meat. So yogurt and cheese. Uh, yogurt and cheese uh, uh, could be taken every day, but the main issues are related to quantities. So small quantities because we uh, potentially the, the calorie uh, underneath yogurt and cheese are these are uh, food rich in, rich in fat including the milk so we have to prefer the fat free uh, yogurt uh, fat free milk so you preserve the nutritional uh, uh, aspects of it have been uh, uh, that are very uh, um, helpful food for your uh, nutrition, but uh, the possibility to increase the fat of your diet is, uh, uh, um, is very high. So you have to be careful in the quantity and try to eat fat-free uh, yogurt or foods. Nuts and, nuts and olives are... Uh, 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 foods that have to be that could be taken uh, also in a, also this in a small quantity so but are healthy food that uh, to be included in the diet uh, take care co 
back goods because uh, uh, I mean uh, cakes, cookings, pies uh, are uh, particularly rich in uh, 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 fat and sugar. So uh, try to uh, uh, avoid, uh, I mean, uh, to buy uh, food that is uh, already uh, uh, already uh, prepare from the supermarket and so on and try to prepare this food at your home with uh, uh, fresh uh, 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 fresh uh, I mean uh, uh, ingredients uh, wine yes wine is part of this diet but uh, you know western diet is mostly uh, mostly beer which is particular beer is, is rich in sugar so be careful about the quantity of beer and try to avoid the sweetened drinks because uh, uh, they are rich of sugar so uh, suggestion is mostly for water and uh, a small quantity of wine so having said that uh, we could say okay italy is uh, fully uh, is a part uh, of a, uh, is fully uh, into the Mediterranean Sea. So we could say, okay, Italian people uh, could be among the best in the world to follow diets and to follow their weight. But the reality uh, is not, uh, is not, uh, is not as, as it could be, uh, okay, as, as we could think. Because this is a, a, an European initiative, uh, which you see, uh, 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 initiative on childhood obesity in Europe, and you can see that especially the country in which you see the flags there it is Italy, Greece, uh, the Cyprus island, or Spain, are the country in which we uh, see much more obesity in boys and girls in Europe. So, uh, although we live in a place where, uh, in theory, the Mediterranean diet uh, should be part of our everyday life uh, for reasons uh, that will I show you later. Uh, we are not so uh, uh, we are not so able to control uh, the the diet the, the weight of a younger population, at least uh, also in Italy. And you see that when you look at Italy, again the south of Italy and uh, exactly the place where everything started uh, in uh, the Campania region near Naples uh, is the region that the percentage of over overweight and obesity is higher in Italy. And the region of the North Italy are the part that, uh, for, reason, for other reasons, uh, have a lower percentage of uh, overweight and obesity. So what's happened? Why this? And uh, we can spread this uh, data including, uh, yes, looking at the younger population or the older population, we see that younger and older are much more affected by obesity. But the overweight condition have other factors, uh, have, uh, is related to other factors that are explained in this slide. So other factors are related to education, to the gender. For instance, you see clearly uh, this is our, these are data coming from Italy, but uh, females have, uh, uh, that male, male population weight is uh, much uh, higher than female population in every uh, decades of age. And that the educational levels have an effect on uh, weight. So the, the lower the educational level, the higher the weight. Of the people, of the, the people. And this is every decade, in each decade, and uh, uh, so the, uh, this is a effect that is a, that is a clearly visible from the epidemiological data. And uh, another, another, uh, sorry, this is educational level and also uh, you see that when we look at the uh, intake the daily intake of fruit and veget vegetables at least in italy once again you see the opposite situation between uh, male and female so you i, I said that females are uh, the females weight is lower than uh, the males 
and they consume a higher quantity, females, they consume a higher quantities of fruit and vegetables. And when you, uh, when you see the, uh, uh, also the relationship, relationship ship between fruit and vegetables daily intake, you see that uh, the uh, uh, intake of this uh, fruit and vegetables is higher in people with uh, a, a higher educational level, and the intake is lower when the educational level is lower. So it's not a question of diet, you, you see from this slide. It's a, also a social, a social issues at some points. So it's a question of a family, it's a question of education, and a question of income. And when you look at the data of a, uh, uh, of a uh, population that is lower than 10, the age of eight and eight years. And you try to look at this data, if uh, there is anything that explain uh, uh, what's going on in relationship to obesity, and you see that uh, the Campania region is the top of this uh, slide, you see that 38%, 38% of the population, oh, so almost half of the population, of this age in the Campania region, it means Naples in that area, you see that half of our population is affected by overweight or obesity. And when you look at uh, the lower part of the slide, and you mean Bolzano and Trento, this is the north of Italy, near the Austrian, in the Austrian region, you see the lower parts, lower uh, percentage of obesity and overweight. So 50, uh, 50%. So why this happened? Look at this. Uh, uh, look at this uh, 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 survey. Look at the mother. So I, I, there uh, uh, isn't a fault in the mothers, obviously. But it's just to understand why social issues uh, uh, are so important. Why, if you want to uh, have any kind of effect on the weight of a child, we have to talk with the mother. So this is a, a survey of a mother. So you see a, ma a mother, uh, uh, this is a draw of a mother with a bit fatty boy. And, and see what thinks the mother of a boy. In the upper part, the mother thinks 40% of a mother that, have a, that they live with a fatty uh, uh, child, with fatty children, they think that uh, the children, 40% of this mother, thinks that the children have a normal weight, although it is not normal weight, he's, over, he's overweight, but 40% think that he's not overweight. And if you look at the physical activity of uh, these boys, this uh, child, you see that uh, when patients uh, uh, are uh, uh, from questionnaire, we understand that uh, these boys doesn't have a, a, a correct lifestyle and doesn't move, uh, doesn't have a physical activity that they should, the mothers think that 60% uh, of, this piece, of these children have an adequate physical activity, although they don't have this. So there is an overestimation of the physical activities of their children. There is an overestimation of a normal weight. And also, there is an overestimation of what they, they eat. So 70% of the mothers of overweight children say that uh, food intake is not excessive, although it is. So uh, that's why I, I want to say it's a question of social issues as well. And that's why we should work when you think about all this aspect, when we talk about this aspect, especially in childhood, but also later on when the child grow up, grow up or in the families, that we don't have to educate or treat only the patient, but we have to treat the family. This is the main concept. So the probability of having overweight in a child is increased if one of the parents is overweight or obese. It is much more increased if it is if it, if he is obese. So 
normal weight parents, uh, much more probability that you have a normal weight children. You have one overweight or one parent obese, much more probability of having a child which is overweight. So there is an underestimation of the reality. So uh, by these questionnaires, uh, this is a uh, recent questionnaires, uh, we, we see in Italy that 8% of the uh, pediatric population don't eat very well in the morning. They have no breakfast at all, 88%, and 35% have no adequate inadequate breakfast. Sorry, this is both in Italian, but you have a translation in English. Anyway, follow what I said. And the more than 50% have an excessive mid-morning snack. They don't eat well in the mid-morning. And almost a quarter of the population of Italian ch children don't eat vegetables every day. And uh, a quarter of our younger population of children sweets every day, drink every day, uh, consume every day sweetened drinks. So where is it our Mediterranean diet? We don't eat Mediterranean diet as well. We don't eat very well, including in Italy. We, should, uh, we have a theory, we have a theory of a diet, but we don't eat very well. So you should go to school again to understand what is better to eat in Italy as well. So look at also the lifestyle. 38% don't eat legumes once, at least once a week. So this is not very good for them. And almost 50% consume sweet snack more than three days a week, 10% salty snacks. So we should work more on these points. I go a bit fast on this next slide. This is a program of education that we have in Italy for the schools. So some counts, uh, very easy counseling for the families, for boys. This is from the, our Ministry of Health. And this is a, also, a, it was both a survive, but also uh, yes, something that is uh, easy to understand for boys. So I go through very fast through this slide, but something for breakfast, uh, you have something that related to the fact that we, we have to move every day, go to school on foot or by bicycle, uh, counseling relating to what we should eat, uh, some uh, counseling related to fruit, vegetables, exercise every day, uh, at least one hour a day, remember this aspect, uh, uh, reduce uh, the time that our young uh, children, our children, but also this is good, uh, this is good also for the older, uh, reduce the time that we, 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 look, we stay uh, watching TV or on computers uh, and be careful on drinking what we drink and remember that uh, uh, water, water, and water is better than other, uh, than the sweetened beverages. Why this is important? It's important that if we uh, uh, have a weight loss, we reduce obviously insulin resistance, glycemia, and lipids uh, parameters. Uh, but uh, when we start uh, any kind of diet and we want to lose weight, uh, we should uh, uh, remember one point, but we can't uh, uh, do any kind of revolution in our life. So everything had to be started uh, with uh, at least uh, with the idea to uh, reduce uh, the calories. That's, that's good if there is something wrong, but not to reduce too much the calories. So no more than uh, 500 or 1000 uh, uh, kilocalories per day. And the when we start, we want to start to lose weight. We don't should we we shouldn't lose more than two, three kilogram kilogram for month. But also, only one kilogram at month would be good, would be fine. 
one kilogram or two. It means uh, 10 kilograms in a year. If it, it is the trend is important, the trend, low, uh, a low reduction trend, one kilogram, two kilogram per month is enough. Uh, we talk about uh, we talked about uh, okay Mediterranean diet. You know we, you know that in internet in Google you you could find any kind of diet, a low calories diet, low sugar, low fat. Mm, uh, it would be a long conference if we talk about all this kind of aspect. Uh, anyway, uh, for sure, uh, low sugar, especially if you have diabetes. Uh, uh, uh and uh, and uh, uh, low fat if you want to lose uh, weight because uh, the calorie and fat are uh, much more higher for the quantity of food but in in, in, a, in a low calorie or low sugar the, the most important point is the energy content of what you eat so try to be careful of the calorie and I will show you some example uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, caloric restriction and diet is helpful, yes. Uh, there are some data also for Hallstrom syndrome patient. You could prevent hyperinsulinemia. You could uh, uh, reduce the quantity of uh, medication and uh, you could avoid the medication for diabetes uh, with a correct diet in Astron syndrome. There are good example, and also from the UK group, uh, uh, Richard Pizzi uh, presented in the past beautiful data about this aspect. This is powerful also to do in, uh, in an Astron syndrome patient. You don't have to, you have to, uh, to, to, to seriously, seriously consider that the possibility that diet is helpful to uh, uh, to control uh, glucose parameters and improve uh, uh, lipid parameters uh, in, uh, in Austrian syndrome patients. Uh, I want to stress when, you, when you're talking about diet and this Mediterranean diet is helpful uh, in this way. Uh, the concept is a glycemic, uh, glycemic index. This is a, I want to stress this concept with you because, uh, and then invite you to Google this part of my presentation. And the looking in Google, in internet, the glycemic index of the food. Why I'm, I'm, I suggest you this? Cause uh, the, um, there is a huge difference in uh, uh, food, in the uh, uh, possibility by food to increase glycemia in your uh, blood. And this is not only, a, uh, this is not a theory. This is not a question of uh, researchers, professionals, or uh, 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 this is a very simple comp concept that works uh, for you very well. And you have to understand this point. Uh, for instance, uh, if you eat carrots, carrots, uh, raw carrots, glycemic index is low. If you eat carrots, cooked carrots, glycemic index is high, maybe high. So the possibility to increase your sugar is completely different. So you have to have the food have a different possibility to increase sugar. Raw food, raw food increase less, in, you have a less increase in glycemia in your blood, less stressful for your pancreas, less stressful for you, for your medications. So why that? Because the when you eat carbohydrate, I mean sh sugar to keep it simple, it is uh, uh, it entering your stomach and the bowel and then in circulation. But the possibility to, to, to enter in the circulation is affected by the stomach emptying and, and by digestion processes. And these are affected and related in the left side by the fiber content of the food, by the volume of the food, by the texture, by the food composition. So if you look at this uh, uh, slide, you see that, uh, and I invite you to look in Google, but some food, kind of food, have a high gly glycemic index. Uh, the, the, the higher is glucose, the poor glucose that you use as, as sweeteners, but also bread, 
Uh, and this is a, a, an effect of a white flower and potatoes as well. And uh, I, uh, also the rice has a, a higher, have a higher glycemic index. There are other foods uh, on the, with a green color, in this key, case, uh, that have a low glycemic index. So the possibility to uh, the sugar go up when you eat this food is, uh, is a bit lower. So fruit and vegetables usually have a green color. You see banana. Banana is among the fruits that increase more glycemia. So, for instance, uh, if you wanna, uh, if you wanna try to reduce your sugar, banana does what doesn't work very well. It's better the uh, an apple or the pears or uh, other uh, other uh, other fruits and so on. Oranges. Um, Brown bread, for instance, uh, uh, is better than white bread and so on. So uh, be careful also of the quantity, of the calories quantity. I wanna, I wanna uh, uh, show you the left lower part of the slide. You see that uh, the higher quantity is related to a mix, you see there, uh, of bread, ham, and cheese, you see uh, 555 kilocalories for uh, this serving. And if you look at the right side, what uh, apparently you, you seem to eat much more calories. You see, this is a plate of pasta with a bit oil, tomatoes, it is 300 calories. So be careful about the calories. You see an apple, uh, 150 calories. You see uh, mozzarella, be careful about the calories of the mozzarella. You see, sorry, the apple is 80 calories. The mozzarella you see there is 300 calories. So try to uh, uh, be careful about the calories. Apparently the red, red meat is not, not so high quantity of calories, you see 190 calories in that case, but the quantity of fat, if you wanna reduce your fat intake and, and uh, you want to affect much more lipids parameter in your blood, it's better to switch to white, to white meat. So just an example, you wanna eat one of the, uh, of, uh, 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 one uh, uh, that you see on the left, you see it's a, it could be, a, approximately the quantity of two plates of pasta. But if you add cheese, if you add cheese, you, you increase. So just to be careful what you put in the, the hot dog example. And if you, if, you, if you eat fried potatoes, it's too much. This is not exactly the count, but this is for raise your attention on what you eat. So be careful of that, this part. I have some example of healthy serving uh, possibility to eat. For instance, uh, some example are related, you see barley salad with vegetables and shrimps, uh, and you could eat uh, other as example. Uh, this could be, for instance, a dinner or a lunch, caprese salad with olives, uh, melon with dry, uh, with parma, uh, ham, for example. This is another example. Uh, uh, a serving of pasta, especially uh, brown pasta or, and beans, uh, grilled vegetables, uh, bits, but small quantity of walnut and almonds, and fruit, fruit salad without sugar, remember, only the raw salad. One pizza, if possible, uh, uh, eat pizza not with a white uh, flour, but with a, uh, um, with, uh, with uh, uh, brown brown uh, brown bread okay this is uh, available so our goals uh, is to as i said is to work with a family in that case and to lose weight not very much but to educate uh, uh, and to chase our lifestyle i will uh, a bit uh, uh, a bit inputs related to exercise 
Yes, uh, how much I have to exercise. Any, uh, start, uh, my suggestion is start, start to exercise because any exercise is better than no exercise. And this is a, a benefit for your cardiovascular system, not only for your, uh, for your weight. Uh, exercise is helpful because it uh, improves uh, function of the muscle of the body. So it improves the... Uh, uh, insulin effects in the muscles and, so, and so it's helpful to control your blood sugar and it prevent cardiovascular disorders. How frequently? It should be done every day, every day. What does it mean? It means uh, uh, theoretically, I, ideally it would be one hour a day, but you can start in this way. So start with 10 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, start with something. Uh, the most important point is that you change your mind. Start to walk. It's enough. Start to walk every day. Also, if you feel tired, because uh, probably you feel tired because you don't exercise too much. Obviously, first things, ask to your doctor, shall I I am, I am allowed to uh, work. If your doctor say yes, start to work. This is very, very important. Just to have the numbers, it means the uh, best number is one hour a day and 10,000 steps. Use your app that you have in your cell phone. I use to control the cellular phone of my patients because you usually wear your cell phone, your mobile phone, sorry, mobile phone every day. So look at your mobile phone and uh, uh, and the because we usually under underestimate what we do during the day. We think to work, but in reality we don't work too much. So uh, look at this. Uh, obviously for. Uh, People who have diabetes, be careful about the sugars in your blood. So don't exercise if your, if your sugar levels are low, below 70, because you could, uh, uh, this is a favor, the lowering of, the, of your sugar in the blood and the, is favor of hypoglycemia. So be careful. So don't exercise in this case. And don't exercise if your, if your sugar is very high, uh, more than 300 as, as an example. Uh, so uh, this is a, uh, yes, a check for your physician. Uh, give time to your body to warm up and cool down. So, uh, Take your time to do this and wear the good shoes also. Okay, this is another important aspect. So I wanted to conclude my presentation uh, uh, with this uh, uh, very few slides. One is related to European initiatives. There are some European initiatives to control the overweight and obesity in pediatric population. This is a plan that ended uh, a couple of years ago, but uh, just to uh, see what's uh, uh, the, I mean, the uh, European uh, or the, uh, our society uh, political headquarters uh, 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 help the population to control their diet, there are a lot of initiatives, and these are related also to inform, uh, to empower and inform the families, uh, to try to control the marketing and av advertising to children. Children watch TV, but we also watch TV. So advertising is a, a critical point of our society, and also favor the healthy option for our population and healthy environments, especially in schools, and uh, uh, also to encourage, encourage the physical activity of the population. Uh, what about this project? Uh, is going well or not? In some aspect, the uh, uh, project uh, worked very well, but in other aspects, uh, you see in the lower part, for instance, uh, uh, there was a le not, uh, less activity 
in labeling, for instance, and in taxation, because uh, uh, our political uh, uh, the governments thinks that uh, taxation of some foods or some uh, mm, yes, our uh, some of our uh, some something related to foods that are not uh, so uh, healthy. Uh, might be an important point to reduce overweight in our society. So very, uh, this is very true last slides. Uh, we faced uh, all over the world, including Italy, including UK, including the patient that we see, I see in um, office every day, that uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, have increased insecurity in food because uh, there, there has been a, a situation which people remain in the, at home or for some of them uh, with a lack of uh, social protection. We, uh, we saw an increase in prices of some food. And unfortunately, you know, the war in Ukraine, and this is probably will be another aspect of it will, be, will affect uh, the marketplace of food in, in the world in the next months. Also at school, people remain at home, Ch children remain at home. This is uh, another point that uh, uh, gave some problem to control the overweight condition. So we reduced our mobility. We remain much time on the screen with uh, both uh, not only children at school, but also uh, population in general remain much more at home. So you see that uh, uh, obviously a pulmonary disorder was much more worse so that uh, related to the everyday life of people affected by COVID-19 disorders. But this is, this is an effect that uh, we, uh, this is an effect on our society. And I saw also personally show many, many people that increased weight in these two years. And one of the part of the problem was related to COVID-19 that uh, affected uh, our everyday life. So I want to conclude. Thank you again uh, to Catherine and, and for all of you, uh, for people who connected. And uh, I hope there will be time for some question. I'm sorry because I uh, try to conclude to stay on time. Thank you a lot. And I will uh, share all the slides are for you. I will, uh, I will share the slide, obviously, but no secret. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Pietro. Some very strong and clear messages throughout that, I think. Um, I know we've got, I, I do appreciate we've got some limited time, but we've got a couple of questions coming through from parents that they'd like to ask. So I will ask them on their behalf, which are in the chat box. Um, one is from Gonzalo, who is Spanish. He's the father of uh, an 11 year old with Ulstrom. And he wants to know, his question is, whether intermittent fasting could help the metabolic disorder, thanks to the benefits of the autophagy level that this diet produces? Oh, this is a very nice question because uh, just this morning, I see a summary related uh, uh, from my, one of the societies, a scientific society, in which I, I take part of this society. It was the Italian Society of Endocrinologists. It was a summary of literature, an article that uh, analyzed this aspect about fasting. Oh. There are a lot of, uh, uh, if you Google fasting, uh, you found a lot of uh, possibility. One, intermittent fasting, one day fasting, uh, mm, uh, mm, mm, part of the day fasting, uh, a lot of uh, uh, possibilities. We could say there is, a, there is no true scientific basic uh, basis of this, uh, uh, on fasting. So my, uh, my suggestion is that at the end, at the end, it is the calorie intake, the total amount of calorie intake that is important. So 
uh, about fasting. I could be an example of fasting, but is it related to my everyday life? I, I don't suggest to anybody to do what I do in my everyday life. You know, I am a doctor working in the hospital. I take a short breakfast in the morning, some couple of coffees during the days. And very few, I, I'm fasting for part of the day. I will have a dinner, but I didn't have today already. So I wake up at 6.30 today. And now in Italy, it's uh, uh, nine o'clock. So I spent my day working and it's a short of fasting. This is my life. And I, at the dinner, I eat also the plate and the table, I think. So I, I, I eat a lot at dinner, but this is part of my life. So what about fasting? This is my suggestion. Be careful. If it's part of our life, it's not so wrong because generally speaking, we are uh, able to fast for one day, two days, probably, and so on. So, but it's not so helpful for the reasons that I tried to explain you during this presentation. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, uh, fasting is something similar to a revolution. It's something that you can't prolong too much. It's helpful, of course. You uh, is fasting, uh, for instance, when we in the past there was no insulin, many many decades ago, the therapy of diabetes was fasting. Of course, they don't have anything than fasting. This was, was the therapy of that time. So fasting is helpful for some reasons. It reduces glucose and so on, but it's not a good therapy. It might be helpful for people who believe that, uh, that uh, fasting uh, is much more uh, Mm, uh, uh, that they, uh, they consider that uh, fasting is helpful for them. I, I, I never try, this is gen generally, generally speaking, I never try to, uh, mm, could say, uh, uh, if people want to try, you can try. I don't want to say that you don't have to try. But generally, at the end, this is my main uh, messages. At the end, uh, it will be the total amount of quantity of calories that, may, that will have an effect on your weight. It's not related that you fast or not. So if in a week you take the whole quantity of a calorie of a week, it's not possible, of course. It would be an experiment. In one day, it's the same if you, if you, if you spread the quantities along the days. Anyway, fasting too much is not good for your cardiovascular system, it could be stressful. And if one educated children, educate the children that food is good. They don't have to avoid food. Food is not the evil. Food is good, it's the quality of food. So help your patients, help your boys, help your children to eat, but eat appropriately. So. Uh, no fasting, eat an apple, much more apples, eat carrots, eat something that is, doesn't affect too much the metabolism, speaking about Alzheimer's syndrome patients. So I, I think I've, explained, I've answered this question. Okay, thank you very much, Pietro. We have another question from the same dad that I will read. Um, he also would like to ask if any food supplement such as vitamin B3, niacin, antioxidants such as uniquilon based Q10, as well as modified citric leptin could help in the metabolism of fat. Sorry, I didn't, pre I didn't pronounce that very well. Um, in the metabolic rate of fats. I understand, I understand you, you, you pronounce correctly. Unfortunately, once again, I have to say you, uh, 
they are not helpful to lose weight. This kind of vitam vitamins are helpful only in particular uh, conditions. Uh, for people who uh, are uh, who lose weight because have been submitted to uh, uh, surgery for obesity, surgery procedures for obesity. You know that people that are uh, obese, overweight with cardiovascular disorders might be submitted uh, to surgical procedures that reduce the stomach. So sleeve gastrectomy or bypass uh, surgical procedures. In that case, uh, uh, vitamins, uh, supplements are an obligation for that patient. This is the only uh, situation that I know. The other situation that might be uh, uh, considered also in Astron syndrome population are patients that take, that are under the medication with metformin. Metformin. This is a very common medication in Astron syndrome, in diabetic population and in Astron syndrome as well. Metformin reduce, could reduce the absorption of vitamin B12 in the long term, in the long term. You have, a, you might have a reduction of vitamin B12. So after years of treatment with metformin, it's important to have a measurements in your blood of vitamin B12 levels. In that case, it's important not to stop uh, metformin, but if it's considered useful for the patient to, uh, 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 to give a supplement of vitamin B12. So this is my only consideration related to vitamins. Generally, uh, vitamins are very much proposed in uh, internet, in uh, Google and so on. My view is that you lose your money for these uh, compounds and then they are not useful. And if you eat, if you eat fresh fruits and vegetables, you found exactly what you have in that compounds. So just eat fresh fruit and vegetables. It's enough. In our, in the Western society, there is any uh, possibility to, uh, to, 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 to that people need to uh, need to uh, have an, a supplement of vitamins or nutrients, uh, uh, whatever you want. So, unfortunately, and the effects of these products on metabolism, on leptin, and so on. I don't suggest you to follow this uh, these suggestions. Um, there could be some, uh, um, uh, um, there are, um, uh, it has been proposed that some supplements, uh, this is true, my, I, I, but I don't remember the English words for these supplements, uh, uh, but there are uh, a few supplements that might be effective to control glycemia in people that have a mild alteration of glycemia, uh, but they, uh, they, they don't consider these supplements have a, a substitution of your medication and uh, the much powerful effect on your glycemia, remember, is always uh, the physical activities. So uh, remain on the, on the, on the, yes, don't, don't follow too much this, uh, uh, prescriptions. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Then we've had another question, um, and I'm going to direct this to one of my colleagues who I know is online. Yeah. My colleague Marie McGee, who works a lot with our under 18s, particularly around um, preparing food, enjoying food. So if I've got Marie, if we can unmute Marie. There's always questions that come up that are around measuring portions. And I know Marie has got some kind of top tips around that. 
Um, can we move to Catherine? Have we got Marie? I can't yeah. have... Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Yeah. Thanks, Marie. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm the transition coordinator at uh, Birmingham Children's Hospital. And I'm also the uh, transition coordinator for Austrian Syndrome UK. So I just wanted to share a couple of things that have worked really well with our children and young people. Um, the first thing was one of the things we've done as a pre-clinic activity is teach the children and young people how to use their hand to measure portion sizes. So for instance, a finger, what, uh, their own finger, because that's related to their body size and weight. Um, for instance, a slice of cheese would be no longer or thicker than one of their, their middle finger. And we use, um, and for their palm, they can do measure certain measurements around nuts and berries and all sorts of things. And that actually is one of the best things we've ever done to teach them about their portion size. In fact, two young ladies that I know very well, if you question them about various things, they'll know instantly how to um, work out portions using their hands. And that's how well that that stuck. And there's lots of resources online um, to support that. And, and um, I, I guess, and we'll, um, when you put together all the information pack that goes with this, there'll be links to various sites for that. And the other thing is, is that language is really important. Our young people are completely turned off by the word diet, meaning Mediterranean diet, anything with the word diet in it, it's almost worn out. Whereas if we talk about healthy eating or, um, uh, the sort of lifestyle choices or we do a, a slightly more positive spin to it they're definitely far more on board and the same way with the word exercise almost that is almost like oh you're telling me I've got to do x whereas if, if we use the word activity and talk to them about being active um, they're far more on board and also I always mention about stretching um, and I'm not um a dietitian or physio by background. I'm an, I'm an educator by background. Unfortunately, with a lot of our young people, I, we, I observe as, as they lose their sight and they, some of them become less active, they actually become quite stiff. So walking and sitting, yes, the basics, they're quite good at, but you watch them stretch for something or reach for something. It's amazing how um, stiff, some of them start to become so I'm always sort of talking about stretching and the, the we've we've got a little picture up of a character called Bodkin so we've got um, a range of resources around that that also I'm sure Anne will put out with this and they are exercises that were created by the physiotherapists at the children's hospital but actually they're useful for anybody any, whether you've got Olsen syndrome or not Olsen syndrome, if you're an adult child, a young person, they are good for everybody. But a daily stretch is actually really important. Um, so those are a couple of my top tips. Thank you. Thank you very much, Marie. And that leads us on to some of our resources. But just prior to that, as a way of wrapping up, can I kind of um, if there's no more questions, I can't see any more questions coming through from the chat. However, please do send questions in after this if there's something you think about, and we will try our best to find the answer to you. Um, so kind of on behalf of all of us, can I say a very big thank you to Pietro um, for joining us this evening. I do realise it's much later in Italy than here and that he hasn't had his supper yet either. So can I give my, you know, my thanks on behalf of all of our folk online, our AS community. Um, we will capture the questions, as I said, and some of those answers, and we will put those together in a kind of resource pack with the top tips that we've heard about, you know, the best of the Mediterranean diet. ASUK has a kind of well-being club where people send in recipes, but as Marie rightly said, there's also a lot of information on our website 
um, which is around staying healthy, staying fit. Um, I'm aware that we're running over a little bit. We will have we will edit this. We'll have the recording so that you can put together and share with educators or clinicians or others, perhaps who are looking after your children or with adults, so that you can help inform others too. Our website address is www.alstrom.org.uk. And as I always say, you can always contact us. Please contact Catherine in the first instance. She will come back to you fairly immediately. Okay, so just the last slide, just to round up and remind people, you know, we'll do some top tips, an edited version of this, fabulous. And again, just to remind you that we have got the patient registry, the AS Global Patient Registry, and I would urge you, where possible, please do complete that. That's where we will have a bank of information that researchers can find out more and we can push forward with research around this ultra rare disease. So again, a big thank you to Pietro on behalf of us all. A big thank you for all of you who have taken the time to join us tonight. Again, stay in touch. We're doing these webinars monthly at the end of the month. So any topics that you want to explore further, you know, please send ideas in and flag those up. So thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, Pietro.